one of the things that I've found out is, you know, when you're when you when you're having problems, everything becomes about you. I mean, every you're at all these meetings, everything you're doing, uh, and the worse you are, the more everybody's concerned, the more you're you're uh, in, in, inadvertently you become centered, focused on yourself, right? And one of the the keys is to get out and care for somebody else. Uh, the thing that brought me to Libo Two. And then talking to you guys was when I started watching your videos and and starting to try to understand it, it just made sense. I mean, it's just like common sense. If you look at you look at a hyperbaric, you're going in there and you're trying to force oxygen into the tissue, and it can do that. But at the same time, you're almost fighting your own battle. Do you feel you know enough to make some comments about how your life might have been different if you'd have had this tool? To train with and recover yourself while you were still on the field. Yeah, well, I'm doing that now. We we have a thing at our clinic. We have we do a baseline on people. We do a QEG, we do a balance, we do the Cognitrax, we do we do a baseline on people. And every kid should have a baseline. I can ima- I can't imagine what it would be like to have seen when I was 16 what my brain was like before all this started happening. Uh, so first of all, I like to say get baselines. Second is, is I still love football and I still love sports, and I think you can play them responsibly for yourself responsibly uh, if you're doing what you're saying. If these things are in your training rooms and these are the things that you're working uh, on a daily or, or, or as needed basis, but I don't say, you know, it's not, don't wait till you're hurt. Uh, but anyway, long story short, I fully agree with that, is that these things should be everywhere and it should be a full program uh, that these guys can can use on a weekly basis. This is what everybody I talk to, you know, it's like, and I have all my friends, I got a tattoo here on my arm of a, of a friend of mine who was going through the same thing I was going through, except for he committed suicide. Mm-hmm. And he did it with me on the phone. And, you know, it's, it's uh, I look at guys like that and I go, man, if we would have just had this, if I could have just talked to Chris and said, look, dude, let's go sit by a fire and talk about this and, and then let's do something. But the, the um, I look back at, at the every football player I talk to and everybody out there who plays football knows this, this thing, is that I thought, this is almost funny, you think on Sunday after the game, you think that that fog is probably because you drank too much beer or whatever. Is it? Because all I know is that Sunday, and every player will tell you on Monday, you're, you're a class, you're sluggish, you're kind of like, man, you know, you, just, you kind of feel out of it. It's the letdown from the game. Is it? And that's, that's my question to all these guys. Like, is it really? Or should have instead on Sunday after the game, should we have been doing Livo 2? Should we be doing our, we have what we call an SSR, a full, full protocol. Should we should be doing this the, the day after the game? Absolutely. That's what you should be doing to recover. And, and even, and as you know, even recover from the physical things, not just the mental things. So, yeah, 1,000%, it should be in every locker room. Well, one of the things we did last year, I've been trying to get it in front of some of the high schools and stuff, which is what I call the program NeuroAssure, but it's basically, you know, give them a test similar to what you took, and then they take the test, and then periodically later they take the test again, and if they've got any decrease in neurological function, that says, hey, you need to go do some LIVO2 training. And that's not assuming they're using LIVO2 for personal performance optimization. But, you know, when I compared this against the very the marines and some special forces guys there's enough improvement in neurological performance and physical performance that says you know if you get hurt and you've got this tool to hand it can really help and i don't mean to take off with the conversation but you, you've been there you've been yeah. on, in the locker room and you can visualize and you've been through the all the way downhill you wait how many years was it between when you first started experiencing these problems and when you, you met live up too 15, 20, okay. you know, a long, long time. But to your point, and on, on on that baseline, you know, so just throwing this out, kind of self-plugging on our Pacific Clinic, but, you know, the guy that owns Pacific Clinic's Cadwell. Cadwell's built the, uh, the uh, with the University of New York, built the norms for EEGs, right? They, they kind of know the brain. And so we have this thing of this baseline that we want to make available where a high school can actually get an EEG out there and all on all his team all our team and that with like you're saying the cognitive facts things like that where it's all done and now they can um uh you know check it later and we're we're here and we happen to know most of the 
the really good neurologists out there. I don't. Carl does. Um, so that we can actually have the, the good, the great people read these things too. The other thing I found out about EEGs, of course, we use a QEG, which quantitative EEG looks more at the deep structure of the brain and gives you a lot more data. But I did find out that EEGs and QEGs, they're as good as the person reading it. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and that's it's like a football coach. A lot of people coach football, and there's some that coach it really well. Um, so we're we're trying to make that available to high schools as well. Yeah, the EEGs are nice. Um, but okay, so just for the record, are you ready to have some fun and take a look at your numbers? Yeah. All right. If you scrape down on the screen, you should see my screen share where we've got before after uh, presentation of your uh, neurological panel scores. You just page down on the conference. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, I'm looking at it. All right. So the first test we did was what? December 20th of 2019. And then the second test is roughly nine months later. So um, two things on the point, which is I want to point talk about the you know relative increases. And so as I look across the score, basically every, all of your scores went from a low score to, or you know a low score to a higher score in each case, and that many of your scores, like all but one to five went from a first percentile as in a red to either a yellow a green or a dark green meaning that the your brain was materially working better so you know if we scrape down here neurocognition sort of this is a general number sort of everything memory improved still got some headroom verbal memory improved still got room for improvement visual memory was about the same Huge improvement in psychomotor speed. Reaction time went from terrible to excellent, which you which is something you'd expect from a former NFL. You played quarterback, right? Right. You'd expect your reaction time to be, you know, like a rattlesnake, which now it is. Uh, complex attention doesn't show any difference. I don't know if I believe that. Cognitive flexibility, some improvement. Processing fe- speed, significant improvement. Executive function, significant improvement. Social acuity, significant improvement. Reasoning, I don't know what happened here. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the reason is. Well, no, usually in this case, there might be one of the tests in the sequence where you misunderstood the instructions. Yeah. So I would generally expect to, to you know, see a, you know, an improvement across the board. We didn't have scores on those. Simple attention went from very poor to quite good. Motor speed also. So anyway, the thing that I wanted to do or get you to do in terms of your interpretation is like as you go through these, you know, the numbers tell one story, which would be like kind of clinical, but you've got your human story. So sure. in your opinion, do the numbers tell the truth and your reality, like how reliable or how correlated, how well does this test, the difference in the test results correlate with your quality of life experience? Well, I would, I would, I would have even expected it to be higher in what it's doing for my life experience because I, uh, and I know I got a lot more room to improve. Uh, but you know, even Annette can tell you when we first used to talk. I just, I mean, I was having trouble even putting together sentences. Not that I speak great now, but it, it's a heck of a lot better. I'm running a, a, you know, an executive director now of this clinic. I'm able to function, you know, get things done. I was. I was getting a point, I, I do a lot of video work, I, I was at a point where I was actually doing something for a friend of mine with the NFL, uh, where I literally had to call him over and say, dude, I don't know how to run my own camera anymore. I just look at it and I go, I have no idea. And and I was always the guy before that they would go to, to uh, always would figure stuff out and all of a sudden I couldn't even run my own gear. So now I look at myself, I'm, I'm back able to function at a, at a high level. And uh, so I, I see, I see the, all the improvements on, on my cognitive abilities, my even writing. I couldn't hardly write. Um, it, I mean, it, it, there's no way I can tell you how bad it was. Uh, so all those things improve, but I would say they they pale in comparison to the uh, the improving emotional and improving in in uh, digging life. Uh, so. 
that to me is is probably the most important part of it. But yeah, I mean, if you talk all, if you, if you ask people around our clinic, they'll they'll tell you. I mean, they remember. I couldn't. I wouldn't really take on take on conversations because I was scared to do it. Uh, I found myself. You know, this is this is a, a year and a half ago. I mean, I should show you my dog down here, but I have a service dog who she's now retired. Is what I say. Um, <laughs> but a year and a half ago, she saved my life. I mean, I was lost, lost literally in the mountains, and uh, she walked me out six miles to my son. Um, the worst story right before we started this um, process. I, I haven't lived where I'm living right now in the Tri Cities. I haven't lived here since I was like 17. I think I lived here for uh, one year sometime. But anyway, I haven't lived here forever. And uh, I went to somehow I went to my house I grew up in and was trying to get in the front door. And the people were like, "Dude, you are you?" And I was like, "Wait, I don't live here." And then I was going. I went sat in my truck with my dog, and I was like, "Wait, where do I live?" You know what am I doing? To try to how did I get in here? I don't. You know, it was just that was the bottom of the bottom. Just literally did. I, it took me probably an hour and a half to figure out how to get back to where I lived. Um, so <laughs> you take it from that to take it to now. Yeah, all the motor skills, and memory, all you know, all that stuff is beautiful. But emotionally, man, that's where the the, the gold is. Got it. I got two more questions I think will really help because the other things that, you know, people come to us and they wonder is like, you know, when we tell them, you know, stories about how people have done, you know, how truthful have you found what we told you before you bought the product? How well does what we said about the product and how you would respond match to your experience with the product? Yeah, I'll take take it a, a little bit more here. Um, for me, first of all, I mean, Carl Cadwell, who owns Pacific Clinic, him believing in me, I knew him my whole life, but him saying, okay, let's do this. And he talked to you, he's a very, very smart man. He talked to you for about two minutes and said, let's order it, and ordered it. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't be here without Carl. Second was, is that listening to you and then Annette, Annette's just, I just love Annette. Annette's one of the greatest trainers greatest people I've ever met. And the things that you guys told me, and even as Annette was kind of helping me get started in training, she had me taking it easy, she kept me up. But the results are, are much greater than I would have believed. And what you guys told me, I, don't, I mean, you guys told me it was gonna be good, but I don't think you guys captured the emotional breakthrough it was gonna be when, in telling me that, that I experienced. And I, I just remember times talking to Annette going, this is this is just unbelievable. And her continuing to push me forward. So I would say you guys undersold it. I would say that Carl was smart enough to figure it out from the, from the first second that it was, was great. And it took me a while to actually experience it. Because I am a pretty much a doubting Thomas when it comes to things like this. Got it. Well, I know you, you, know, you kind of transitioned from I'll call it a fellow that needed help to a fellow that spends all day every day helping others. Uh, can you make any comments about how you see people in that you're helping responding to it, and how consistent are their experiences with yours? Yeah, it's 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 pretty amazing um, on all fronts because we have everything from uh, former athletes to uh, people with uh, stroke victims to senior citizens to young people. And uh, across the board, we get results. Uh, we also get great results. I have to say, it is like anything else. And I tell my clients this all the time. I say, you know, it's only going to be as good as you want to work. If you're not going to work at it, you're going to get what you deserved, really. And I, it, but it is hilarious, is that I'll have, I've had some people just major depression, PTSD. We have some veterans. And... I always say, just just give me three weeks. Before you make a call, give me three weeks because I know that those first week, first week, first two sessions, three sessions, four sessions, they're they're going like, yeah, this is a, this is all right, it's a workout. And then I watch the fog lift, and I, I watch emotions change. I have one lady who, man, she was she really was having some struggles with with emotions, and she was just so close. I couldn't get her to do anything, and frankly. 
I could I had talked to you about her one time. I, I could hardly get her to uh, drop down into hypoxia. Uh, wouldn't even hardly move. And all of a sudden on the fourth session, all of a sudden you could sit there and see the um, saturation levels changing. And, and like in my head, I'm seeing like the capillaries opening. <laughs> uh, and I watched her all of a sudden. It was funny. We have we have one, one thing we do where I have a kind of a meditation VR that they do afterwards. She was in there on the, the VR and has a headset. And she was singing and, and singing this song. And I, was, I looked at her husband. And he was like, wow. Because <laughs> we saw her two weeks earlier. She wouldn't even talk. She was so mad at the world. So I see, I see incredible results. Uh, and it seems to me like it's about, for most people, it's, it's around between four and the seventh session that they start to feel something. Uh, but they're, they're, you know, I, like I said, I tell them, you know, this is a great week and it's, it's the greatest week you live so far, but next week's going to be greater. And you see that, you know, so it's like if they'll keep pressing. So I always say, give me three weeks. Because I know that it's about the period of time when they start to feel the breakthrough. But yeah, across the board, great results. Awesome.